down a winding road through rolling hills and regrowth forests, there's a small community called Koyamaka Woods. To enter, you have to wait as a solar paneled gate slowly opens. Here, everyone lives completely off the grid. That means their water comes from a set of three wells and they don't buy their power from SDG&E. So we all have to provide our own power and we also have to, uh, you know, we rely on ourselves. Gary and Robin Wares have been living here for about seven years. They power everything in their home with nine solar panels. And we have 12 batteries in total, so there's four here. When the sun's not shining, batteries provide reserve power that can last 36 to 48 hours. They also have a propane backup generator for multiple cloudy days. To conserve energy, their walls are filled with straw, which provides really good insulation. But if you're picturing the three little pigs, don't. Aside from having walls that are more than a foot thick, their house looks completely normal. The first evidence you can sort of get an idea it might be a straw bale home is the thickness of these walls, how far the door is inset. Um, Which is the thickness of the straw bale. Yeah, because otherwise from outside you wouldn't know. Both wares are biology professors and like living close to nature, but they have other reasons too. I'm very, very concerned that if we don't move away from uh, a fossil fuel based economy uh, real soon, then um, basically we on the planet Earth is going to be very difficult to maintain a, a sane and, and functional society. Despite supplying all their own power, Robin says their lives are pretty normal. They have every modern convenience like TV, a microwave, computers, and a vacuum cleaner. But if they want to turn on multiple big energy users at the same time, they have to switch on their generator. You know, I, I'm going to be honest and say that it's nice when you can just run everything simultaneously. Uh, but if we put the generator on, if we're okay with that, we can run everything simultaneously. We can vacuum and run the big appliances, and it's all handled by the generator. But that doesn't mean the wares aren't always looking for ways to conserve energy. They have an on-demand water heater that they control with a panel in the bathroom. Right now, the water heater is not on. And so if I want to use it, there'll be a little red light come on, and it'll start to heat up the water and the red light comes on saying it's heating up the water. That's the only time it's using any energy. Working with an architect, Gary Ware's designed the home to make the most use of the sun's rays. We also have a window in the dormer that's south facing. And just like downstairs, you'll have a lot of sunlight coming in in the winter to heat up the house and there's not a lot of sunlight uh, again till uh, the fall comes. They also warm their home with dead oak and manzanita that Gary chops and burns in a stove. This is oak and this is manzanita. They keep it cool in the summer with ceiling fans. Despite this summer's heat, it's never gotten above 80 degrees inside and usually stays in the low 70s. But as soon as the sun goes down, we open up all the windows. Right. And it starts Try to let down. the cool air in so overnight. Their home is also surrounded by a sprinkler system to guard against fires. When activated, it sprays a wall of water from the eaves under the roof. The wares say there isn't much they miss about life on the grid. I don't have to pay anybody money to use electrical power. When the big blackout occurred, uh, and it was a little challenging getting home for me that day, uh, but when I got home, it was so pleasant to relax and have TV and have energy and San Diego was in chaos. But their biggest motivation is to do what they can to reduce their impact on the environment. I think that if everybody um, were to make a choice of doing what they can to conserve energy, to, to generate energy with renewables, solar on their homes, uh, demanding that their uh, provider has renewable energy, that those individuals, uh, they accumulate to a, a large degree. Claire Tregesser, KPBS News.